In today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can improve your fly fishing cast with better timing. One of the most important factors in becoming a good fly caster is having very good to excellent timing. And it's something that's often overlooked and misunderstood. In the perfect world, we want to have this line just about straight now behind us. And as we're pulling forward, we're pulling on a straight and tight line through majority, if not all of the stroke. Now, this can differ depending on the weight of the fly you're using, the head that you're using on your fly line. What we don't want to happen is to, especially with heavy flies or heavy heads on our fly lines, is to have that line straighten out too much at too high of a speed so you get this factor where it's like this a stone on the end of a string if i threw it and someone was holding the string when it gets tight if it's a heavier the rock heavier the stone the more it's going to bounce back when it gets tight so we don't want to have that thing bouncing back which is going to create slack in our cast and slack in our cast whether we're going forward or back means that we are not pulling on a tight line we're not utilizing our entire stroke to help make our cast some half almost all of that stroke could be wasted doing nothing but pulling the line straight we cannot begin a good fly cast and we're talking now about overhead fly casting like this so there are lots of different types of fly casts that don't involve having our lines straight in front of us and behind us. But we're talking about common overhead false casting back and forth today. In order to have that work, we need to be pulling on a tight line. And when I'm first starting out, if I'm not turning around to see how long this takes for that line to straighten out, I'm doing a lot of guessing. And in addition to that, I could be looking for other common mistakes such as letting my line go down in the back, uh, letting it curve around to the side, a lot of other things that can occur if we don't turn around to see what they look like. So when I'm lifting this up, I'm going to follow it back with my head and see, is it going up there where I want? And the instant it's straightening out, I'm coming forward straight forward. And the same thing goes for coming front to the back. I need to allow that line to straighten out. Let's watch what happens if we do not allow that to straighten out. So if I come forward too soon, not only do you hear a little popping noise back there commonly, you will also lose the tension on your rod and then your forward cast doesn't look very good. Now it can cause a lot of different issues in the forward cast from it completely piling up right off the tip of your rod to maybe just the leader piled, piled up and it didn't fully straighten. The more stroke you waste pulling slack out, the less chance this line has of straightening out in front of you. So we can demonstrate with a couple different casts. So if we first do it and let it fully straighten out, get good timing, the leader, everything straightens out all the way. If I start coming forward just a little bit too soon and I got it good, well, now my line kind of straightened out the first two thirds of it, the rest of it's in a pile. If we have horrible timing where well, we're not waiting at all, and very often with beginners, there is no pause back there at all. So many beginners, as soon as they get to the back, they start coming front to the front. And because they're not looking back here, they really don't realize what detrimental effect it is having on that cast. So if I immediately start coming forward, You can see the line was still heading back that way. Every single time you could hear that little cracking, popping noise, sounds like a firecracker going off behind us. That is a definite key that your line was still heading that way and you pulled it this way. So if it's still going that way and we're pulling it back this way, we've completely lost all tension on our tip and we are not making an effective cast. Another important thing to consider when we're dealing with timing is every different length of line can take a different amount of time to unroll 
and it all depends on how fast we're moving that line. So every time we move that line at a different speed, it's going to take shorter or longer for that cast to unroll. Even if I used a static piece of line, I could take one cast, super slow, two, one, pause, two, pause, one, pause, two, pause. Now I could make that same exact piece of line and move it faster, add some hauling, one, two, one, two, one, two. Same length of line, two completely different pause lengths. So we have to take into account how fast is the line traveling and how much line do I have outside that tip. When we start to change lengths of line as it's going back and forth in the air, which is where you will eventually want to get to most likely, if I started with the head all the way up here by my hand, there's an orange white transition. And I have extra line down here that I'm going to get into the air before I ever make my final shoot. So if I got this going to one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. The last two strokes I had to pause a lot longer than the first couple because I was feeding line out, getting more line out behind me. It takes much, much longer time for that line to unroll. So I wasn't trying to increase the speed as I was going, but I was increasing the length of line. If you are increasing the length of line and increasing the speed, then your timing may not increase exactly the same. So you could start off very slow and do it nice and slow and as you feed out line, you can decide, well, I'm, I'm gonna go faster with this line. Every cast cannot be the same. There's always something changing. If we are using different lengths of line or a different tempo, that timing has to constantly be changing. It is not going to sound like a clock that always ticks on every second. But when you're first starting off, you can kind of use that to get used to making the timing, timing even on both sides. So in general, when I'm casting, if I'm casting a static length of line, it takes the same, same, one, two, three, 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 one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. See how that cast fell apart when I got rid of the one, two, three on the back and I only made it one, two. Now I lost all the tension. I lost my loop and the cast looked pretty sad. When we're first starting off, we can use kind of that clock ticking to get an idea that I have to pause the same on the front and the back. If I'm using the same speed and power, which I would encourage you to do as a beginner. So tick, 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 tick. We want to be careful that we're not letting our timing go too long so that we're having this problem. Tick, tick, tick. We don't want to hang it up so long that gravity pulls it down to the ground. So we could make what otherwise would be a perfect cast. If we pause too long, gravity pulls it down. Then we got to take that line, send it back up over our tip and around instead of having the line come from up here straight down to our target. So things you can do to get used to building up your timing where it becomes muscle memory and you don't have to think about it a lot is just take a piece of your rod. You can do this in your house. You don't need to be outside with a full fly line. You can do this all winter long if you needed to. Inside, you can practice tick, tick, and pause, pause, pause. It is a great technique for practicing a lot of things involved in fly casting. All the things I talk about in my videos about when to bend the wrist, how to bend the wrist, how to move your hand, where to flip your rod, all those things you could be working on with just the bottom section of your rod and your reel. You don't even need the reel on there. You can just use the rod and practice these things indoors so that they become more natural more comfortable for you. So when you do put a line outside the tip, it'll be working much better. 
Hopefully that gets you on the way to some better timing. If you want more tips on how to improve your fly cast, please check out one of my fly casting playlists right here. And if you need help with your cast, you can contact me for a video fly casting analysis as well.